Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of commands in WPF. In part 1, I demonstrated on how to implement commands and how to create custom commands. In this video, we carry on from where we left. Now, like I explained in part 1, that every UI element that has the capability of invoking a command has that capability because it implements the I command source interface. Now this menu item implements that interface and it has a couple number of properties from that interface. So we have command and among these properties is also another property called command parameter. So this property allows us to pass an object to the event handlers that we specify in the command binding here. So I'm going to pass in a string to demonstrate how we can use this property. So I'll pass in a string James and I'll go to the code behind. Now here we have two uh, handlers. So the first one will set the can execute to true. And then here in the can execute, we can now run some logic. So I'll go ahead and comment this out. Then I'm going to create a variable and I'll give it a name obj. So obj is equal to this argument here, which is the can executed routed event args. E, then I'll access a property called parameter. So this will return the object that I specified in the command parameter. Now I'll cast it to a string. Now using a message box, I'll show the string. So say obj. So I'll go ahead and run this code. Okay, it's up and running. So I'll invoke the command. And here we see a message box showing James, the string that we passed through the command property. The command parameter, as well as the command uh, property here, that is part of the I command source interface we have another one which is the command target so this property here allows us to specify a UI element that this command is going to target now for me to demonstrate how we can use this property I'll go ahead and get rid of this UI and re-implement some UI I'll add in a text box and two buttons okay Okay, so we have a simple UI specified here. Now here I have two buttons and I set the content to paste button and copy button here. Now I'm going to specify their commands. So by setting the command property of the first button. So I'll set its command to the paste command. So this command is found in the applications commands class. For the second one, I'll set it to copy. Now this text box element has got logic that can handle these two types of commands, the paste and the copy command. Now here, I've only specified the text box and two buttons and set their commands here. So I'll get rid of this command binding specified earlier on and I'll get rid of these handlers. Now I'll go ahead and test this application. Okay, everything is running just fine. Now here we have a text box. I can type in stuff and we see that the paste button and copy button are not working. Now we know that the text box has got internal logic that can handle these commands, but apparently these are disabled. Now the reason for that is we haven't specified the target for the commands. So these commands don't know which element they're going to be executed on. So 
I can specify a name for this text box. So I'll say text. Then on these buttons, I can now specify the command target. So I'll use a binding and I'll say element name text. Okay. So I'm simply specifying that the command target here is get an element which has the name text, which is this text box. So basically I'm setting this text box as the target of the command. I'll copy this and paste it on the second button. Okay. Now we have the buttons and we have specified that we want this command to be invoked on the text box. Now remember the text box has got logic that handles these commands. So we don't need to write event handlers and uh, command bindings to run the logic. So I'll go ahead and run this code. Okay, so here we see that the paste button is enabled. Now because I have some items on the clipboard, that's the reason this button is enabled. Now, if I try to, you know, type in something and then highlight the text, we see the copy button is now enabled. So I can copy and I'll get rid of this. We see it's disabled and I can actually paste and we have items paste there. Okay, so I'll close this. So here, just by writing these few lines of code here, we are able to execute these commands on the text box. Now we have specified the core, the command target here and the text box has internal logic to handle these commands so we don't have to write any code. All right, now I have demonstrated this. Now the next step is I'm going to create a custom control and I'm going to implement the I command source interface. Okay, so I'll get rid of this. Now, here in my project, I'm going to add in a user control. So I'll give it a name, command button. So for this command button, I'll set its background to royal blue. Okay, so that's it. Then I'll call, I'll go to the code behind of this uh, button, which is the command button. Okay, here we have it. Now I'm going to implement the I command source interface so that my button can be can have the capability of invoking a command so i command then i'm going to implement this interface so i'll say implement interface so we have three properties added. So I'll just specify a get and a getter and a setter for all of them. Okay. All right. So we have a button that implements the I command source and it specifies a command parameter, etc. Now, what I want to do is that when this button is clicked, I want to invoke whatever command is specified. Now that I have a command property here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, um, subscribe to an event, which is the mouse. Left button down
Okay, so we now have an event handler here. So this will be executed every time we press the user control. So, so once that is pressed, I would like to check if this command property is not no. I'll say command is not no. So if it's specified, then do something here. So if the command is specified, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another check. Now I'll check if the command can execute. And I'm going to specify a no. Okay, so basically what's happening here, I have to check if the command is not no. Then I have to check if the command can execute. Now in this can execute method, I need to pass in a command parameter because that command parameter might be used in the event handler. So I'm going to pass in whatever the user is going to specify here. So I'll say command parameter. So just pass in the command parameter that the user specifies. Then if it can execute, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to invoke this command. I'll call the execute method and I'll pass in the parameter. So that's simply the quickest way of implementing the I command source. Let me summarize. So whenever the button is clicked on this control, we execute this handler here. We check if the command is specified. If it is, then we check if we can execute that command. Now for us to check if we can execute, we need to pass in a command parameter. So whatever the user is going to specify will be passed through like we did in the other example. If it returns true that we can execute this command, then we can run this execute. Okay, so that's that simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'll go back to the main window here. Now I'll go ahead and build this. Okay, so we have the project built. So I'm going to specify the button that I created. So I'll say command button here. I'll set the height to 25 and the width to 200. Okay, so we have our button here. Now I'm going to specify the command on this button. So I'll say command. Now my button has got a command property. So I'll say open. So I'll use the open command. Then I'll create a command binding. I'll add it to the command bindings of the window. So use the open command, okay? And can execute, specify an event handler. Okay, so we have a button, we specify the command, and we specify the handler to handle that command in this command binding. So I'll go to the code behind here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to pass in a command parameter. So I'll say, hi James, okay. All right, so we have our event handlers here. So using this argument, I'll set the can execute to true so that this is always available. Now, remember that when we were implementing the command button here, we said that when executing this command, 
pass in this parameter here. Now here, that will come handy. Now we can access this parameter using this argument. So E parameter, you see, we have it available here. And inside this execute, we also have it available. Now the reason for that is because the I command source interface requires us to pass in that parameter in the can execute and execute methods. Okay. So I'll create a variable obj is equal to the parameter as a string then message box show then obj okay now remember that we are using the open command here now like i said in part one that the command itself doesn't have internal logic so we can use open we can use find whatever type of command we want to use we can use it as long as we specify a command binding that points to the event handlers and those event handlers is where we actually write our logic in this case we just show a message box so i'll go ahead and test this application okay so we have the application up and running now we created a custom button and implemented the i command source interface now here i'll go ahead and click this button and it invokes a command okay so hi james is the object that we specified in the command parameter so guys that's it for commands in wpf i hope these videos get your feet wet when it comes to understanding commands in WPF. So guys, I'll see you in the next one. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this.